In problem one, what we want to do is to use our graphing calculator to help us decide visually how many solutions there are to a given quadratic equation. My process for each of these is going to be the same. Make sure they're in standard form. Put the left-hand side as y1. The right-hand side should be 0. Find the intersections. But visually, before I find the intersections, I want to identify how many solutions there are given how many times the graph crosses the x-axis. So let's see how that works in problem number one. x squared minus 10x plus 25 equals zero. Here's my quadratic equation I want to solve. I enter the left-hand side into y1. I enter zero into y2. That's the right-hand side. I'm graphing it on the standard window. My graph is a parabola that opens up and it touches one time the x-axis. That means I'm going to have one repeated real solution to the given quadratic equation. I'd like to use the intersect process to find out what the solution is. Second, calc, number five, intersect, and then press enter three times to get to the intersection, which is five comma zero. So what I've done in the white space at the right hand side is to identify that the graph intersects the x-axis at only the point 5,0. Therefore, the solution to the given quadratic equation is the repeated solution 5, 5. Note this is a list of two solutions, not an ordered pair. So we can either say there's two solutions or one repeated. It's kind of the same thing, but one repeated gives you a little bit more information. In your white space, I'd like you to draw this graph, sketch it out, and to plot and label the point at which the graph crosses the x-axis. For part b, I'm going to make sure the equation is in standard form, which it is. It's set equal to 0. Enter y1 and y2 for my left-hand side and my right-hand side. And here I have the graph with the parabola. It crosses the x-axis twice. I'm going to plot these points, find the intersections, and then identify the x values of those intersections as solutions to the given equation. I'm going to run through my intersection process and see which of my intersections my graph gives me. It depends on where I start with my cursor. Yours might be on the other side. The first one, I'm going to round to two decimals. It's 0.42. I'm going to write that information on the graph and in my white space. To find the second solution, I'm going to run through the second calc process again, number five, but I need to move my cursor closer to the second intersection than the first. Once I have it there, I can run the intersect process. I get my second solution, 3.58. I'm going to write that on the graph and in the white space at the right. So at the right-hand side, I have one solution as 0.42. The other is 3.58. I write them together as a list with a comma in between. Note this is a list of solutions, not an ordered pair. For the third graph, the first thing I need to do is to put the equation into standard form, setting the right-hand side equal to 0, putting y1 and y2 now with the standard form information into my calculator, drawing the graph. So notice that the graph does not cross the x-axis. That's going to imply that we have no real number solutions. There's no place that intersects on the x-axis, but we have two complex solutions. So in the white space, I've indicated the graph does not cross the x-axis. That means we have no real solutions. However, we will have two complex solutions. We'll learn more about these later in the lesson. So just as a reminder, on each of these problems, you should be including the graphs here, a rough sketch of the graphs, in your white space, even though I'm not actually drawing them on the white space here. And then as we go along, we'll do more examples to understand how these solutions are connected to the values the graph crosses the x-axis.